Welcome, and thank you for joining today's webinar on physician compensation reporting with visual dashboards. My name is Michelle Perry, Vice President of Web Analytics. And joining me today is Scott Everett, the Vice President of Analytics Solutions. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Welcome, Scott. Today, analytics and visualization have really become one in the same. Here is an example of a very powerful visual physician compensation dashboard where the tools today are very easy to use. They allow end users to be able to interact with the data. Users can slice and dice through the data, apply filters with just a few simple clicks of a button. Scott, how can we utilize these tools to further understand physician compensation? Well, Michelle, you know, this is a tool that would have been great even paying providers as we've, as we've been able to do the past 15, 20 years where we were just able to use volume-based metrics, RVUs, collections, because that was really how the organization itself got paid. But changes in the industry are really changing the way that organizations are going to be reimbursed by the payers. And because of that, it really makes sense to start looking at making sure that our providers are compensated in a similar fashion. So it's moving away from the strict volume-based reimbursement and looking more at value, looking more at helping to contain costs and sharing savings. And even beyond that, moving into managing the health of entire populations, partnering with the payers to look at ways to contain costs, but do so by improving health of overall populations. And in order to do that, it's really going to require some, some significant changes in the way that business of healthcare is, is performed. So today, we'd like to present this webinar and talk about a few of the challenges that exist, particularly with calculation um, and reporting of compensation, how we can incorporate different analytics to bring in visualizations to be able to communicate effectively with our physicians, with our executives, and be able to utilize things like metrics and benchmarks in order to make sure that we're being effective in the way that we're working with our providers. Great. And with that, we'd like to have our first participant survey. So on your screen, you should see a poll. So is your organization actively working to reshape your physician compensation? Okay. It's, it's interesting to see uh, most uh, organizations that are participating today are considering uh, changes. Some may be major changes, some minor changes, but most are definitely looking at changing uh, the way that they're compensating their, their providers. And it really makes a lot of sense if you look at it. You know, one of the things that I've done recently is I've been reading a lot of articles, and I've attended a couple of conferences, and, and really when you look at it, the biggest problem that's going on in healthcare today is it's a problem of misaligned incentives. Um, right now with what's going on, we're incentivizing volume over quality. And anytime that happens, it, it really kind of subordinates what's best for the patient. Are we really incentivizing keeping these patients healthy? Well, I think the issue that you have is looking at it not just from an overall reimbursement for your, your organizational standpoint, but if you want to align the incentives for your organization as well as for the providers, we have to ask ourselves the question, is volume-based compensation really appropriate? Is it really what we want to be going after, or should we be moving more towards some organizational efficiency by incentivizing our providers to provide the best care possible to the patients and making them accountable for the success of the overall organization? I know this is something that is, is a struggle everywhere, Michelle, um, and I know you've worked with several clients. What are some of the things that you're hearing? Yeah, so a lot of what we're hearing today is that physician compensation is very complex. It's complex because we have to take lots of various data. The data is not all coming from one or even two sources. Sometimes it's coming from seven, eight sources. Um, and there's a lot of manual work around uh, not only the data collection, but actually calculating what the physician's compensation is. And all of this manual work is really required a lot of people to just to get to the end result or the, the final number. 
So therefore, we're not able to manage and communicate the plans, changes in the plans, or even working with the physicians to understand how they can make changes to their company so that they can make changes to their own compensation. So Scott, can you talk about how the industry changes are affecting physician compensation directly? Yeah, definitely. You know, those things that you just talked about, Michelle, are things that we have heard from our clients forever, even in the ones who are on some of the simpler, pure volume-based compensation plans. And when you look at it, how are we going to start addressing things where the reimbursement we're going to start getting from the payers actually almost disincentivizes volume, or at least asks for volume across a much, much wider base of patients. So how do we address things that are going to be calculating incentives based on like per member per month type awards? How can we go through and look at compensating providers based on physician satisfaction or patient satisfaction? How can we do things like incorporate citizenship goals and providers looking for the overall well-being of the organization and the profitability and financial and quality goals that are really driving the success of our organization as a whole? Well, one of the things that we found is trying to model this exactly the way that the payers are reimbursing isn't necessarily the best solution because those are going to be evolving over time. One of the things we found that drives the most success in forming a physician compensation plan is to do something that reflects the organizational goals and culture, whether you're moving towards a new culture and new goals or whether you're already there aligning the incentives of the organization and aligning the incentives of the providers through your compensation plan to move them towards that. A lot of times that's going to be around the realms of quality. A lot of times it's going to be around the realms of patient satisfaction because those are the competitive measures that you're going to be scored against moving forward. Once you've done that, then you need to create kind of a balanced scorecard where you can recognize that, hey, not everything has a pure monetary value that can be recognized, yet we need to be able to record these, report these, and incentivize on them all the same. And then once you decide where you want to go from this and keep the end of the path in mind, you can create a pathway taking tiny steps in between in order to not have this big bang change transition, which is going to draw a lot of resistance and, and dissatisfaction within your, uh, your providers. So obviously, anytime you're making changes in the organization, particularly around something as sensitive as compensation, it really helps if you can report on this and make things very visual and make things very easy to understand so that everybody knows where you're going. Transparency is really the key in this. And so you can incorporate things like context in your reports and comparisons, whether it's to an internal benchmark or an external benchmark, uh, doing peer-to-peer comparisons are are really important things which help to manage the, the change, make it palatable. And then also allowing the providers a little bit of self management, helping them to look for their own answers and helping them to really help guide their own reimbursement. I think the issue that comes in is People tend to make this really complex, and it needs to be a simple process to do this. So it also needs to be simple from the standpoint of those who are doing this communication and those who are doing this reporting. And I know, Michelle, from a technical standpoint, that can be a challenge to to work through. Yes, it certainly can. So with that, we'd like to take another survey poll and ask, how many variables are you incorporating into your calculations with your physician compensation plans. You know, do you have a single value-based metric, you know, whether it be pure RVUs, are you doing multiple volume-based metrics, or are you doing a combination of volume metrics and quality-based metrics? Or do you have so many that you just, really, it's just a big sigh and it's all too complicated? Great. So it looks like we've got a a little bit of all over the, we've got some folks doing about a third, a third, and a third. So we've got folks doing single or multi-volume based, and then a few that are doing volume and quality based. And then there are a small percentage that are doing too many that they don't probably even want to talk about that. So the way we can simplify some of the calculations and consolidate 
all of the data is by adding and applying some automation to the calculations and how you determine what your final output is. So we really want to optimize the time that it takes to calculate the visitors in comp as well as optimize resources so that we can basically apply some rule-based data modeling where we can have the calculations created automatically, which is going to reduce our errors, and it's also going to reduce the amount of people that we need in order to get to the end calculation. And that's going to allow people to concentrate on more on communicating the plans. So what we would do at PDS for the data modeling is we're going to consolidate all of those many data sources, whether it be productivity, your payroll, your clinical quality measures, and any other plan parameters that are part of the input to your physician plan. And we're going to stage all of those data elements into a relational database. And that data model will be used to optimize the data for really for nice and streamlined reporting. And this data modeling also needs to be flexible enough to handle the overrides and any changes that may be required for your reporting. So with that, bring some challenges as it particularly relates to physician compensation. Because with the compensation, everything is different. There's many data sources. All the data is not coming from one place. There's going to be multiple plans, even within one organization. You're going to have different levels of compensation. Within specialty, there's going to be variations. And there's always going to be exceptions, probably more exceptions than you really want to. So we really need to make sure that the, the model that you come up with um, that you have some clear goals on what that model is going to be. So, Scott, can you explain how we would align those goals? Sure, Michelle. I, I can understand the challenges from a technical standpoint, and obviously we're not making it any easier by having all these exceptions and one-offs. But, you know, to speak to your point about automation earlier, and you really hit on it when you talk about reduction of errors, it really is critical that any time you have people touching it, whether keying information in or doing calculations, your increase of error goes way up. And, and one of the biggest goals that you have to have any time you're modifying, changing, or reporting on a physician compensation plan is having accurate and consistent calculations of the metrics that you're using. You cannot have numbers changing. You cannot have definitions all over the place. You, you have to be able to be accurate and consistent if you want to get buy-in from those who are seeing the way that they're getting paid change. In addition to this, you need to make sure that you're being timely with, and you're being very transparent with the information. You need to include all of the plan parameters. You need to show what they're earning, what they can earn, and make sure that they're getting it at least monthly, if not more, and then Communicate, communicate, communicate is really the most important thing that you can do that way. Great. So with that, we have one uh, additional survey. So are you applying automation in your current physician compensation reporting? Um, is all of your reporting calculations done manually? Do you have some automation? Do you have the majority of it automated? Or is, is it highly automated? Great. So it looks like the majority, about 50, a little over 50 percent, you are applying some, some automation. Still have some doing manually, and so that's the majority of the results that we're seeing today. So with the, uh, those folks that are, are doing a little bit of automation, you may be being able to take your data modeled and build a report similar to what we're seeing here today that we built with our visualization. Um, and this report shows all of the plan variables where the users can interact with it, apply filters, rank and sort, and really can easily use this to see what the end result of the physician compensation amount earned is. So Scott, this is definitely something that you can utilize when you're looking at physician compensation. I would say as a, as a finance executive um, or an analyst, someone doing this, you can absolutely see a lot of power behind what's being shown here. And, and this is really great from that standpoint. 
One of the things I think I'd like to do is maybe take it a step further when we're looking at engaging with the providers. I think a lot of times when you're engaging with providers, what they really prefer to see is something where they can get a quick look at the numbers that are directly impacting them. They want to be able to easily pick out what are the key financial and productivity metrics that I'm responsible for and how can I manage those. What are the quality and citizenship areas that are going to be coming into play with what we're doing and what are the things I need to do in order to make sure I'm optimizing my compensation in those areas. I'd like to really be able to see where I'm doing well, where I'm struggling, and what are the things that need to happen in order for me to maximize my reimbursement or my compensation. So I think really when you talk about engaging physicians, there's a few ways. I think we talked a little bit before about making sure that they're being communicated with on a timely fashion, monthly if not more, and, and making the dashboards highly visual. They don't want to spend a lot of time digesting things and doing calculations in their head. Anything that we can put in to make these dashboards very transparent and, and help them understand exactly what's feeding into things is great. What you'd really like to see is not just what's going on, but where you project for an end of the period type thing and help to project what their compensation is going to be and then help them determine where they want to be and, and move forward that way. Right, so a, a dashboard like this, Scott, probably would be useful. Um, this has not only what are the plan components, so we've got some productivity as well as some incentive and clinic goals that are included in this plan. And then this is a, you've got the work RVU conversion factors, so you're looking at your tiers for your plans. And then you can see where you are standing from a physician standpoint, where you projected to be. So I, it looks like this example, we're projected to be at a tier three. And then I, you can easily see where you are in the incentive pool and clinic goals just by not only with numerical values, but the green checks and the red Xs. So where can I maybe apply some improvement? And then at the bottom of the left, you can see where we expect to be paid out. So where, what's the earned compensation? And then the nice pie chart on the bottom right is really helpful because this allows the physician to see sort of what they're leaving on the table or what incentive haven't they been able to earn. So where can they get some additional earnings by, and what percentage is that? You know, I, I think a report like this, Michelle, is, is really great from the standpoint of transparency because it talks about exactly what is involved in the compensation portion. It tells what the tier levels are very distinctly, and it shows very quickly, check, check, X, here's where I'm good, here's where I'm good, here's where I'm missing something. And showing the projections, showing the actual computed projected compensation, and then showing what percentage of that compensation is maybe still being left on the table. This is definitely something that I think would engage physicians, you know, from, from this standpoint. Right, and we can take the same dashboard and put it into a visualization tool. So this same dashboard, I'm still showing the plan components, but it's more of a visual. I have the ability, users have the ability to drill and interact with it, and really still shows the projected compensation, where they are for current productivity. So it's really the same dashboard brought into visualization, which can be very powerful. And Michelle, I think one of the things that is, like I said, it's good about these dashboards because they are being very transparent and showing all of the calculations that come across. I think one more step that would be interesting to take what's there, take the compensation plan, but not just show you know all of the information we were showing before, but allow the provider to go in and choose for themselves, well, here's the projected compensation I'm showing I'll be getting, but what if I want to earn this? What if I want to have my compensation be X? And be able to put that in and see the variables change so that they can understand what are the changes in behavior required to get them where they want to go. Allow them to manage their own compensation is definitely a big satisfier in trying to drive the change within your organization and engaging the physicians to move along with these newer plans. I think when you look at analytics like this as well, you know, we talked about engaging the providers with this, but this is 
absolutely something that from a managerial standpoint is very critical to me and something that I definitely would use as a, as a finance executive. It's something that would help me to manage cash flow projections, help me with budgeting, something that will help me to be able to accrue my bonuses on a monthly or quarterly basis with a lot more accuracy. And so being able to see these departmental level roll-ups is, is something that brings a lot of value from a managerial standpoint. Right, Scott, and the visualization tools really allow you to visualize the data. So here I can select my top performers and see which of those providers are maybe not hitting their incentive pools. By simply selecting those failures in the incentive pools, I now can see that there's a small list of providers, but look, they're all in the same department of cardiology. I can do the same thing, maybe not as my high performers, but maybe I want to look at my low performers and understand who they are, and then maybe of those performers who are not hitting their incentive pools. And again, I can easily, with some slice and dice, see that the majority of those providers are in the family practice department. Yeah, this is really a great tool to, to use because, again, what you want to do is be able to identify those individual providers that um, you want to engage with the most. And looking at this from a departmental role up, seeing the impact of compensation at the different departmental levels and finding certain departments that may be struggling or have more outliers than, than others with regard to compensation so that you can really make the plans a lot more equitable across all of the providers. I think we want to talk a a little bit more, not just about the reporting on the plans we have right now, but what about when we want to make the change? Um, what about when we want to really move more and more away from what we've always done and move more and more into incentivizing these other areas of, of quality, these other areas of patient satisfaction, these other areas of citizenship and, and accountability for the organization? and engaging the physicians in this. This brings about a lot of anxiety when you start talking about the way people get paid. Um, but we're getting to the point where, as Michael Porter said, physician engagement can't just be about maximization of fee-for-service anymore. You've got to start looking long-term and start looking at the overall strategy of the organization, and especially involving around lowering of costs and increasing value. And so when we're doing this, one of the best ways we've found in order to minimize the resistance that comes across is to be able to model what these new plans are going to look like before they're incorporated. So one of the steps or one of the some of the key steps that we've identified that help organizations be successful in making the migration of compensation plans are to look at multiple examples. Don't just get set in one way of this is how it's going to be. Because if you look at lots of different areas and tinker with your variables and the percentage of weights and things like that, you're going to find that there will be a very distinct benefit analysis to what you're finding that you may have found a way to maximize the overall goals of your organization that, that you hadn't thought of previously. So look at multiple different things and see how each variable comes into play and really maximize those for the overall financial and quality benefit that you're looking for the organization. Once you've identified these plans, create visuals and reports and show these models, communicate them out, and then project the impact of each variable within each provider's salary. Look at this at a specialty level. Look at this at a individual provider level and create and show these comparisons as you're moving forward with the plans that you're looking to implement so that when you finally come across one, you can get the buy-in that you require. Right. So, Scott, here we've modeled um, the data, and here's an example of the report where my current plan values are in blue and my proposed values are in yellow. And the tools really allow for easy comparison between a new plan and the current plan. I was going to say, this, Michelle, is, is really a, a phenomenal type thing to, to look at because from my standpoint and the you know, governance committee standpoint, this really quickly identifies 
what are the changes that are coming through as we make the changes in the variables that we've seen? And I would imagine it's fairly easy to change the weights of each of these variables to, to show the different plans that come across. But what this helps me do as an executive is to identify my top performing providers. And the reason I want to know my top performing providers is because we're not just competing for patients anymore. We're not just competing for market share. We're also competing for recruiting new providers and retaining our top providers. We want to make sure that they're compensated fairly and adequately based on, upon this. Additionally, I could go through and I could quickly and easily identify my lower performers. These are the ones who are going to be most impacted negatively by this plan that I need to engage with individually to help them determine the behavioral modifications that are going to be needed in order for them to be made whole on the new plan, or if they're not willing to do this, if this is something that needs to be addressed as well, whether we move them out or move them up. And so this is definitely a great tool from an executive and a governance committee standpoint to have available to just quickly and easily see the impact of all of the different models that we have. I think when we look at this, moving to engage with the physicians even more um, on an individual basis would be a, a dashboard similar to, to what you're seeing right here where it'll show the older plan or the current plan that you're on but then also communicate, like we did with the other dashboards we showed, what are the variables that are going into the new plan based upon their current productivity levels, based upon their current behavior standards, based upon their current projections, where they would be under the old plan as well as where they would be under the new plan so that they can see for themselves what their individual impact is going to be and they can self-manage what needs to be done. So when we look at the overall strategy for provider compensation that's out there, I think the keys that we've determined to be successful in really driving new compensation plans are making sure that we have really robust and strong analytics staged to reflect the compensation variables that are out there, that we are able to bring in all of the data that's needed, stage it, make the calculations automated and be able to communicate effectively what the current plans are, be able to project out and model the newer plans. And we want to make sure that we're getting this communication out in a timely fashion, making sure that we're being as transparent as possible, and that we're allowing the physicians to do self-analysis and self-management of their own compensation. When we do that, you're, you're going to find a greater level of success. You're going to find a greater level of physician engagement. And as you do make the changes and as you do move towards more overall cost containment, quality and value-based organizational goals, you'll see the providers moving towards that as well as they work to manage the way that they're compensated. Thanks, Scott. So PDF core competencies are not only within physician compensation analytics and dashboarding, which is what we discussed today, but we also can assist in many other areas with data staging and modeling, whether it be patient access, denials, patient risk acuity. We also have a tool that allows you to blend multiple data sources for designing dashboards and visualizations. So certainly if you have any challenges in any of these areas, or would like to continue discussions on physician compensation, please feel free to give us a call and we'd love to talk with you and discuss how we can help you. All right, I thank everybody for your time today. It was definitely a pleasure to discuss this with you and uh, thank you, Michelle, for uh, inviting me along for this fun ride. Thank you. Everyone have a great afternoon.